Last week, we learned about reaction rates and what affects them. Well, some reactions can have an order or a power. This means that if you double the concentration of your reactants, it won't necessarily double your products. It could quadruple them. It could not affect them at all. The order of the reaction is given by the sum of all of the exponents of the reactants. K is normally used as the rate constant. So if the rate is given as rate equals K times A to the power of M times B to the power of N, then the rate of the overall reaction is M plus N. To find out our rate law for a particular reaction, we have to essentially play with the products. If we double reactant A and our product quadruples, we know that the power is 2. We know this because we've gone from 5 to 20, which is a fourfold increase, even though we only increase the concentration of A by 2. That means that the concentration of A must affect the rate in a squared manner because 2 squared becomes 4, which is our increase from 5 to 20. If we double it and nothing happens, we know that the power is 0. If you compare various runs with changing variables, you should be able to figure out what each variable is. Now if you want to determine the order experimentally, we can go ahead and graph concentration versus time. Now, if we know that we have a first order reaction, if we graph the ln of concentration with respect to time, we will get a linear equation that looks much like this. The equation will result as this equation, where instead of x, like a linear equation, you have t. But if we have a second order, we must graph 1 over concentration with time. This will also give us a linear equation, but instead of having the slope be this, like the first order, it's going to be this. So, in this lab we will be reacting HSO3 and IO3 according to the following reaction. In this lab we will be reacting sodium bisulfate with sodium iodide. Now, when pure iodide touches starch, a dark blue color arises. We will run this titration multiple times with different volumes of titrant. Fill in the tables to help you figure out what type of equation you have. Is it a first order or a second order? Remember, graph ln of the concentration and graph 1 over the concentration. One of these two graphs will give you a linear equation. And remember, put everything in this lab into the hazardous waste container.